because uh, his concern and deep passion for the residents of District 42 have compelled him to take on the arduous task and very important task of representing, representing them at the State House of Representatives. Being a father, a friend. Thank you. And again, thank you. One thing that we're going to really try to encourage is that one minute uh, a deadline. Um, when the chime works, I'm going to use that. So uh, I thank you. And uh, candidate Schultz, we'll uh, we'll wait till you've got that microphone and make sure you're kind of kind of kind of settled in. And so good, uh, uh, candidate Schultz. Uh, uh, if you would tell us something about yourself. My name is Mike Schultz. I'm running for House Representative of District 42. Um, I know it's getting kind of late, so I'll keep this real short. Uh, there's two major issues that I'm running for right now. Uh, first is rail, um, pro rail. I believe that rail is going to bring take cars off the road, and it's going to bring 15 to 25 years of steady work for our community. The second uh, second issue that I'm running on is education, and I'm trying to bring as much money in the education system here as possible. Uh, especially money of like earmark for CIP money to uh, rebuild electrical infrastructure so that uh, our schools can have 21st century facilities such as air conditioning and computer labs. Uh, currently, right now, Fort Second District is, I guess they're being represented, but I'm not happy with it. And uh, neither should you. Uh, we need a proactive leader that will actually do something for the community. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, Canada Burke, when you're ready. Hello, my name is Tom Burke. Thank you for coming here. Um, for the last nine years, I have worked at the State Capitol as the District 42 Office Manager and member of the Ever Neighborhood Board since 2003. I volunteer as the Ever Regional Board of Director for the Wahoo Resource and Conservation Development Council and am going on my seventh year volunteering as a train engineer during the holidays at Pearl Ridge for the Hawaiian Railway Society to assist in restoration efforts within Emma. My love for Emma Beach is portrayed on my monthly television series entitled For Emma Today, a show that I produce that has been airing on a level for the last nine years. And uh, I'll put a plug in for this. It's Sunday nights at 7, channel 54. And uh, since I have a few more seconds, Chair, I'm participating and I believe that the fabric of this community is to unite 96706, and I plan on bringing, if elected, full-time representation to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Those are the candidates for State House District 42. Let us now begin to hear uh, in one minute apiece the uh, candidates for uh, uh, mayor. Well, my name is Don Campbell. I've lived here in Wahoo for 10 years, uh, college educated. Um, I'm kind of concerned about this rail system, which I don't feel will solve any of our traffic problems. We can synchronize the lights. We can go ahead and use alternative routes on exits on the interstates. We can enhance the bus service again. There's only C bus lanes. We can have hot lanes from the major cities. We can uh, shuttle buses and those services to bring people to terminals and bring them on a little fast, efficient work and cost-effective way of using it. Um, there's many other things to do. Our, our infrastructures are a mess. The sewer system or water system our electrical system. It's outgrowing our... Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, again, I protest before the people of, in, of River Beach in, in front of the camera and tell them that this is uh, I'm really a farce. I'm really a farce. And I'm, I don't believe in surrogate. I'm not sorry, sir. I'm talking to I don't you. care. But the fact that you have people sitting, sitting at this panel, I'm going to make an issue out of it. I don't give a shit. And thank you, Mr. Abilda. We are going to now ask that you leave. No, you call the cops. I don't give a rip. Who's going who gonna to take me out? Who's going to take me out? Look, do you feel like you need to be taken out? What? Do you feel like you need to be taken out? Why are you going to call the cops? I don't feel that this is appropriate for anybody to come into the public. I'm going to say it again. Glenn, I'm going to move. Please ask. Hey, I'm going to protest this now and again, right in front of the people in the camera before the beach people, and tell them that you, 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 and you don't belong here. 
I thank you for your Don't be right. long here. I agree with you. I agree with you. All these yeah. poor people right here. We're going to call them. Oh, yeah, me. Get Cherrigan. Listen. They're feeling some people. You're absolutely right. I appreciate that. But there's other people who are trying to listen, and I'm trying to well, visit my Well, that's people to leave. Right. Well, that's the people. Right, right. And if they, they say no, them, it's a free country. country. They said no. It's a free country. No, no, it's not a free okay. country. Okay, okay. I'd like to have my opinion. Oh, you're right. I agree. And try to, try to spread your information. I agree. I'm not going to have this. And we appreciate, I appreciate your time. Because I think, I agree with you. I'm going to ask these people to leave. Please. please. I'm going to stay here and promote my own agenda. Yeah, like, don't feel free, but see, the thing is, other people here are going to be able to get some people. We didn't come here all to listen to you all. Unless you ask these people to leave. No, they're not saying anything. Don't leave. Oh, how about leave? Why not? Why not? Ask him to leave. I think this is a farce. Don't we have a farce going on? Could you please listen to what I have to say? Wait, 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 would you force surrogates to remove yourself and let the regular candidates? Yeah. Okay. What's the big deal? I think that's a joke. And then they agree that maybe you should remove yourself. Then we can go on. But right now, I don't approve of this forum. One, two, three, four. I don't approve of this forum. It's everybody else is okay. Glenn, Glenn, we would please ask that you allow this process to continue. Well, ask him to leave. Why don't you guys? Glenn Amelda. As, as legitimate people that should be here. As you are bringing shame to the other beach community. Yeah. We are attempting to have a cannabis forum. We are inviting people to participate You set it up and screwed it up. And it was agreed last month, Glenn no, Amelda, that the surrogates the could be here. Surrogates are here. We if I was here, I would have protested. I would have protested. Thank you, Glenn. We are, this we is not fair. You, you are, this you is are, not They're promoting their own You are now attempting to ruin tonight's forum. And thankfully, we have this on video, yes. and we appreciate this embarrassing. Hey, don't touch me, don't touch me. Hey, that's not my husband, my husband, I'm not sure. Hey, 911 has been called. Unless these people, four of them leave. It is. Unless four of them leave, I'm going to stay here. As a matter of fact, so that there's no misunderstanding, well, why don't you ask these people to the leave? conduct of this meeting. That's the name of the board is policy. I'm so sorry for our guests who have come here. If you will please wait a few moments, we will have an eye on the line. We will have a system of people out. The board provides us with something. These people, they may give an announcement. They may give a short message from the candidate, but they cannot sit down and talk like a candidate. He's, he has a point. In the he has never been a case in my debate before. Speak up! Speak up! He's in the right community event! Speak up! No, but he's, this is his forum. He's running this forum. No, but look. The process, Scotty, was screwed up from the start. The fact of the matter is... Wait, it's not the time. There's no make sense of making it worse. You know what I mean? They all heard you. The point is being your point. Why don't you... Why don't you guys don't hey, Dr. Beamer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> community made the attempt. Even I had all these guys in the community. Our that have been working in the community attempt. for. You've been 35 years, I've been 30 years. Thank you, Mr. Beamer. Oh. Thank you, Glenn. But thank you for your time, sir. Oh. Well, we have to go home too. That's to be really clear. Take care of us. Sure. Oh, sure. Okay, go. Let's go. Let's go. Go ahead. Let's go. Okay. Are you guys going to like I just want to thank those students who are still here. We as a board made it a point to invite everyone. Many debates and forums have been limited to what are called the quote unquote top candidates. Now, should a candidate choose to send a surrogate, that is their choice to have themselves represented as a surrogate. It's your choice as a voter to interpret that level of commitment. It's not our place to decide should someone send a surrogate. We are very open to it. We want to have a dialogue with people who represent the candidates. And I want to emphasize again, most debates and most forums have been limited to quote unquote top candidates. And so we are very eager to invite everyone. That's why there are 21 seats behind the table. And we're very eager to hear from everyone. 
I think that what we'd like to do is pick up where we left off, and um, I had you at 51.7 seconds, but why don't we uh, have you start that one minute again? <laughs> yes, I need to talk to Animal, and I'm, I'm really against the rail. I don't see anything solved in any problems as the traffic is expensive. We've never been told the truth of what it's going to cost or what it's going to service. And I think if we had the bus service here, he hands that back up to the top priority, number one in the nation again. Only bus stops are in rush hour. See buses and then you run express routes in major cities. See can nice lights during rush hour. Um, use alternating exits on the interstate. And then use the other alternates that other people want to get across the state. There's ways of working out the traffic situation where you can use it. I don't think the city really wants to try anything because if it did, it makes the rail look like it really can solve the problem. And then it boots out of it anyway. But if you're on a rail, why not run an interstate? Run from kind of up to the line of Iowa, Iowa Beach, Capoe, Honolulu. And so, so, so shell services within those areas to get to the terminals. That way you can stop the parking, have to worry about parking, and you can provide service to the people. It's fast, efficient, on time, and user friendly. Thank you. Thank you, my name is Daniel Cunningham. I'll stand up for this minute, if that's okay. What will be the reality of $400 a barrel? $15 per gallon for gasoline? Over a dollar per kilowatt hour on a controlling economy? What will be the reality within the next 10 years? Has it occurred to anybody? Could you people be under hypnosis? What's the reality? Is that a fair question? What will be the reality of $400 a barrel in this economy? What will be the reality of the air conditioning system for the education system that that over an hour to one hour for it? It's never occurred to anybody? I'm talking paradigm shift. Thank you. I'm suggesting converting to a floating capacity in the city and county in Honolulu, which is doable, it's technologically feasible. A desalinization food plumbing economy will bring, can offer electricity for a penny a kilowatt hour. As a state, city, and county municipal on the power of light, I suggest a public power company. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. And we'll hear from uh, the next mayoral candidate. Hi. The mayoral election this year comes down to a simple choice. Vote for politicians that got us into the mess we're in, or vote for a civil engineer with the expertise and experience to solve the problems that we face. My choice, as I hope yours will be, will be for the engineer, Panos Protodorus. Panos got his degree and grew up in Greece and then moved to the United States to make his new home, his chosen home, in the United States. He went to school at Northwestern University for his master's and his doctorate, and then he moved to Hawaii, where he's worked at the University of Hawaii since then. For 19 years, he's been here in Hawaii, pro providing solutions for our congestion problems, which has been He's done a lot of stuff to help us out here on this side. Um, he's been very integral with a lot of the, the traffic solutions we have. Thank you, uh, uh, Surrogate Smith. We're doing our one-minute uh, candidate introductions and next candidate for, for mayor. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to be here tonight. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to come here and answer your questions. Uh, and as many of you know, I just didn't show up on the other side of the island or the west of Oahu because I want to be the mayor or I want to run for office. You've seen me. You've seen me in your schools through the years providing scholarships for some of the students in these areas. You've seen me greet the children in the classroom. You've seen me at your weddings. You've seen me at your parties. You've seen me at the ever Christmas parade. I've been there and I continue to be there for you. I'm a mayor that has recognized west of Oahu like no other mayor has before. I work out of Kapolei Hale regularly. I have regular cabinet meetings on this side of the island. Everyone from the land developers, from the business owners, to the youth of this community know Mufi. You don't call me mayor on this side, you call me Mufi. 
That's the kind of personal relationship that I have with you. And that's the philosophy that I take with me uh, to City Hall and Kapolei Hale. It's a mayor that truly is going to work with you to make this a better place to live, work, and raise our families. Thank you. Thank you. Those are, those are the, uh, that concludes the mayoral candidates. So now we're going to get opening remarks from the two congressional candidates who are here with us. I believe that you have a wireless mic for you. Gentlemen? Whoever would like to go first. Um, your minute um, begins now. Bring in me a part of old Havana. That old Hawaii. I'm Kaui, C. Kaui Yohanan, Amsterdam, and I am running for the U.S. House of Representatives, District 1. For an entrenched incumbent who isn't here, I would assume since he's not here, if he were, he would tell you to vote for Kaui Yohanan, Amsterdam. So you can feel free to do that. Spread the word. My emphasis is to bring progressive change and hope to the people of Hawaii, uh, to our nation and throughout the world. Through providing and advancing health, the Kingdom of Hawaii, an open office where others can also participate and it won't be dominated forever. Uh, so, and also for peace, peace in Hawaii, in our nation and in the Middle East, and uh, Israel and the Middle East, and education and employment. Vote for Kaui Yohanan Amsterdam for the uh, U.S. House Thank of you. Thank, Thank you. And our next congressional candidate. Hello, I'm Steve Tatai, and this is my third time I'm running for the uh, U.S. House. And uh, I'm not opposed in this race, but since I was invited, I decided to come down and join you guys. Uh, one of the main issues that I've been dealing with is the Iraq War. I'm the author of three books on the Iraq War, uh, you may already know. And uh, I want to encourage you to visit my website at uh, tataiforcongress.com. I also deal with the uh, energy issue, which I've been promoting for the uh, battery-operated vehicles and uh, appliances and etc. Uh, also education, which uh, I believe that is the main thing in, in our community that we need to uh, set it up the way that it would be uh, useful and it would, it would be concrete so that we won't have the problems that we are, we are trying to uh, solve right now. Thank you. Um, Thank, Thank you. That concludes the opening one minute remarks from each candidate. Let us now move into the questions. We will start with the state house candidates. And um, we'll go from your right to your left, starting with um, surrogate uh, for Canada Rodriguez. How would you characterize at the beach? Ava Beach uh, at this time is a very crucial area where uh, people do not decide whether they need a radio for development. And this is also the area where there's a lot of development that's coming in within the next few years. And people have to decide. As a representative of District 42, Ray Rodriguez, you have to speak up and provide big voices for the people of District 42. Time, thank you. Schultz. Eva Beach, or Eva, is a very dynamic area. You have old Eva, you have the older generation, and you have a new development coming in. So it's a, it's a complex area where you need to plan for the future, but you need to also take care of your current residents. Um, I'm very excited about this race, because not only do we have developments such as the rail coming through, affordable housing areas, but then you have some of these historic areas where you make sure you take care of your people. And that's what I want to be as a, as a 
proactive leader that has an open door policy, who can come and talk to me about their problems, and also I can go out and make, make a difference for you. Thank you. Hey. Hey, Lord, how would you characterize the beach? Well, the first thing I think about the Bebe Beach is its residents, and I think the residents of Bebe Beach are the hardest working on the side. I see them, they're a part of the plight that we're all in. We have one way in and one way out. Rail is not coming to Bebe Beach. The buses are like sardines. So when I characterize Bebe Beach, I characterize Bebe Beach as we, we're coping. We're getting by. We deserve more than just coping and getting by. We deserve the type of leadership that I think all of us here are at this table. We're trying to bring in change. We're trying to enhance our community. And, and most importantly, time. <laughs> Prosper. <laughs> I want to not at all talk over a candidate, but I really want to try to stick to that 30 seconds. And so I'll, I'll whisper a polite time in 30 seconds, and then maybe a, a slightly louder time if you go. <laughs> And let us move into the mayoral candidates. And uh, how would you characterize it, Abish? It's a growing community that has lots of problems here because of the traffic and the time of And the uh, community should be equal to all communities and should be handled in the same way, I believe. Uh, infrastructure should be taken care of, such as Cataway and every other, because the riches of the year should be treated equal. We need to help you with your, basically your traffic problem. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's important to understand the reality of this space. The mayor's race is about providing infrastructure. And if we, as I repeat, if it can cost patrolling over 200 dollars a barrel, I think we're going to have a very different reality of what it's like to live out in the destitute area and no transportation or buildings. <coughs> because everybody's dependent on controlling for electricity and transportation. Um, there's, who watches the History Channel? Raise your hand. Right here. There's a good case for nuclear, low-level nuclear radiation, same time. It's actually good for your time. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to be here tonight. I just wanted to let you know why he wasn't. He made a prior commitment some time ago to go to the North Shore Neighborhood Board to make a presentation on the traffic issues that they're working on now. Um, Hans loves the Evan Beach area. He's helped us with our traffic problems. He wants to continue to do that. Um, and he doesn't believe that rail, of course, is the proper way to do that. Which is, is a great place to live, and um, I believe that. Uh, Candidate Hanneman, how would you characterize Ever Beach? Ever Beach, like any other community, people that choose to live here, you want it to be the best. You want your streets to be safe, you want your roads to be paved, you want to be able to have a better quality of life. Uh, this administration is very committed to do that. Once again, you have a mayor that's very familiar with the west side of the wall, works out of here regularly, attends your events and activities. I'm looking forward to working with board member Kurt Favello as he's identified a nonprofit group, Makano Okeakua, to bring a first ever beat sunset on the plane scheduled for Friday, October 25th, and Saturday, October 26th. That's what we want for our people to be happy. So, we, um, We've had someone else join us, and your timing is good. Uh, if you, we'd like to extend you the one minute. We extended the other candidates to introduce yourself, and then we'd like to ask you a 30 second question of how you would characterize it of each. First, Thank the one you. minute. Um, Thank you, I'm Ann Kobayashi, and I've been serving you for over 25 years, first as a state senator, and now as a council member. Um, I think Yellow Beach is a great place. I worry about this Fort River Road traffic. And I am sad that the uh, that we need a mass transit system, but the steel on steel rail will not come to Ever Beach, and this is not fair because this this area is really deserving of a good mass transit system. And there are alternatives to steel on steel, and they can service the Ever Beach area. Thank you.
you, you're welcome to answer a question of how would you characterize that beach also. Well, you know, I've been coming here since I was a child. We used to always come to Ever Beach and it's changed a lot. And that's why I worry about the traffic here because Port River Road is just, it seems to be the only alternative at this point until the north side road goes in. But um, yes, I've always loved Ever Beach. That's why it brings back very good childhood, childhood memories. We must keep the country country. Ebba Beach does have the development it needs so that people have the opportunity to live, work, and play here. Um, but we must protect this community from right. overdevelopment. Thank you. And now we will um, seek uh, answers from our two congressional candidates. Um, how would you characterize Ebba Beach? Ebba Beach is beautiful. It, it also has great potential for further development. We want to keep it safe. Uh, for our residents to be happy, and also for the educational uh, centers to be uh, advanced, and to be a center for more employment. As a representative on the federal level, I would see that there would be more funding in order to do this. Uh, more funding, grants, loans, and subsidies. Thank you. Kevin Tatai, how would you characterize Ever Beach? I think that Ever Beach area is uh, beautiful, it's wide open, and I like uh, the space about it, the beaches, and uh, I've been riding my bicycle for over the past 20 years in the back roads uh, from uh, town to here. But I also want to compare Ever Beach and the uh, couple of problems with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, traffic issues. The way that I think I, I've, thought, I've uh, thought about uh, setting up a plan Time. to have uh, people to live and work in the same area rather than uh, Thank driving you, all Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kenneth Tatei, let's start with you going back the other way. What's the biggest problem facing Ever Beach and how will you solve it? <coughs> I would say uh, uh, we need to as I was beginning to say, is that to settle the people that, or to uh, to have the jobs that the people would be able to hold here, uh, and uh, to uh, sort of exchange the jobs with the people that live in town as much as possible. And so that would cut down the traffic to 50%. Otherwise, I think the problem of the traffic is gonna get worse and uh, I believe that the traffic is, is bad here because as I was coming, I noticed that it's really bad. Uh, at 7 o'clock, it was really bad. Thank you. Uh, candidate Amsterdam, what's the biggest problem facing Adam Beach and how are you solving it? How are Amsterdam? It's beautiful. We want to keep it beautiful. We want to have grants, loans, and subsidies and resources on the federal level in order to advance the educational process, provide employment, health centers here, so that it become a center where it is right now. You don't have to go out to have that. That's it. Canada Kobayashi, what's the biggest issue facing at the beach and how will you solve it? Yes, as I mentioned, I believe traffic is a, is a really bad problem. And the, because the, the steel on steel train will be coming here, there is a mass transit system that could come here where you would not have to transfer, not have to go to a park and ride, you could go right onto the elevated guideway system. That would be a solution. Thank you. Canada Hanneman. Council Member Kobayashi should know better. The Fort Weaver Road is a state road. There's major improvements there. If we try to do a light rail system there, it would get in the way, it would never get built, and therefore it would be compounding the state problem. On the other hand, we're going to continue to work to do things that we've done in the short term. We've initiated the bus route with an express service that gets you uh, into downtown Road in Waikiki. We broke ground in 2008 for the Kapolei Parkway segment from Renton Road to North South Road, which is projected to be completed in late 2009. Uh, and we'll continue to do all these short term measures as we work to a light rail steel on site. And uh, Ms. Smith, surrogate for uh, uh, Canada Prevederos. Well, of course, we all know. I live here in Apple Beach, and we all know that traffic congestion is the problem. So what, what Thomas wants to do 
is we want to work with the state, of course, we'll get the north-south road open, that's perfect, that'll get us up to the freeway, then we want to build reverse all hot lanes. That way you can get on a bus here in Ever Beach, you can go all the way into White Bee Key and not have to make any transfers, and you'll be able to get there quicker than you could on any train, because you don't have to go anywhere else, just to the bus. Thank you. Can the kind of biggest problem facing at the beach, and how would you solve it? It's not just at the beach, but it's everywhere. We don't have a, a commodity-based economy. We should have a steel mill and a competent recycling system that turns trash into treasure. We have absolutely nothing going on for us. We have a power company that duplicates Enron. It's a privately owned power company. We should have a publicly held municipal power company for the people. It's a wise investment of all sorts, including nuclear power, solar, what have you. But we need to look at a transition, a paradigm shift. I have to agree that traffic is the main problem. I know somebody would go and try to synchronize lights and um, enhance the bus service on the city bus lanes during rush hours, stop the on street parking on city bus lanes uh, during the hours operation, and provide it. Provide a fast, smooth operating bus service that we have already, and use it in a cost-effective way. And we can provide express service to and from major cities, to hundred and plus shell service within those communities, doing business issues. We can get more people to ride the bus. Canada Berg, uh, biggest problem facing Emma Beach, and what would you do to solve it? First of all, we have to admit the facts. We are severely lane deficient. We rank bottom in the nation of the municipalities of 500,000 or more, dead last. So we have to improve in getting ourselves an alternative route in and out of Eva Beach. That's the main goal here. We're, we're running our lives around traffic. That is an unhealthy, unproductive way to live, is to have to gauge your life around traffic. So we need to build more roads. We need to augment the H1 predominantly. Candidate Scholz, biggest problem facing Ever Beach, and how would you solve it? I think we all sat in the biggest problem in Ever Beach on the way over here. Uh, as I said before, I believe that uh, solving it would include light rail, but it would not stop it at rail. It would, uh, we would have redesigned bus routes and improved bike paths to complement the rail, and not just having a transit system, but a comprehensive transit network would, would be the solution for Ever Beach's uh, transit problem. Thank you. And so, surrogate for Canada Rodriguez. Biggest problem facing at the beach, and how would Canada Rodriguez solve it? Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, I've been noticing that uh, every time the school's out, uh, there's no grid left, you know, going, going to town. So, what he's thinking about is create more business in infrastructure within the areas of the beach, so the, there will be less travel going to town. And this will enhance more jobs and possibly create the traffic problem. Time. Let's go back through with another round of questions. Um, is, is, is everyone comfortable with the 30 second window? It's a little tight, but it keeps, uh, keeps, keeps the rhythm going. Maybe 45. <laughs> Any objections to 45 seconds? Yes. yes. Good, let's keep it at 30. Um, and so then, next round of questions. If you had your way, what technology would you put on top of the fixed guideway? Let's start back this side, surrogate for Canada Rodriguez. The question is, if you had your way, what technology would you put on top of the fixed skyway? Um, you know, whatever is uh, convenient to the people and it has uh, less in uh, cost, and you can build it within, uh, no, not 10 years, but you, know, you can build it within a certain time where it's going to be, it's not, it's not going to create any you know, traffic or noises and all that. Yeah, I'll go for that. But I go for technology. 
Candidate Scholes. Um, I believe that uh, steel on steel yeah. would be the technology that I'd be, I'd be uh, behind. Um, I believe that uh, Honolulu has been a 21st century city. The state has been a 21st century city for a long time. And it's about time that we uh, start having 21st century technology uh, to complement our state. Steel on steel is 18th century technology. But by the way, uh, what I would like to do is bring it back to the people. I wrote for my employer last session, House Bill 2783, to give Oahu home rule capability that was afforded to all the other neighbor islands. The neighbor islands could have highway technology if they so choose with the tax surcharge. But the legislature took it upon themselves to say for Oahu in our citizen rate, you can't have highway technology, period. It was a fixed fight from the beginning, day one. My plan would be bring it back to the people. Let's have a full arena, full debate. That's why it should be on seal. I don't think I had a chance to meet you earlier. Maybe you introduce yourself. Uh, my name is George Nita. I'm a business owner in Honolulu for 43 years. Excuse me, you're seeking which, uh, which seat? Mayor. Okay. Um, you've come in a little late. We're very glad to have you. Why don't you take one minute to please introduce yourself? Good morning. Why don't you take one minute? You, you came in a little late, but we're very glad to have you. Take a minute to introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry for being late. It's okay, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, the reason I'm running for mayor is because I believe the city should be run like a business and not in debt. The city should be making money, and again, not in debt. I believe the city has a $1 billion debt, and that's about basically why I'm running. I have several programs that will bring money to the city. One of them is Waikiki Grand Prix Race. We've been missing it for 35 years. Long Beach has it, Detroit, Miami, Las Vegas, why not? Waikiki. It will bring in a lot of money into the city. You need to be more open-minded and look at the speed channel on TV, channel 214, and you will see a Waikiki Grand Adult Long Beach Grand Prix race. Anyway, time. getting to that rail. Good, thank you. I believe we cannot afford it. Time. Not at this time. And I need to know how much it's going to cost. And then that's uh, time. So thank you. Thank you. That's, that's the one minute. We're, we're trying very hard to stick to that time schedule so everybody has a chance. And uh, we we're, had a line of questioning now with Canada Kobayashi. And it's if you had your way, what technology would you put on the fixed skyway? Yes, first of all, because I do know that I would never put a light rail on Fort Weaver Road. I think that they deserve newer technology, and I think the river tire on concrete thick skyway system is that new technology. Thank you. And for our congressional candidates, should you have the opportunity to represent us in Washington, D.C., what technology would you most be willing to advocate for the thick skyway? Um, how we answer to that. As such, working on the federal level, my technology would be funding. I would be interested in what the population wants, if they want it, then my expertise would be funding, grants, loans, and subsidies, and other resources in combination with the knowledge of other cities that would use such a transportation system. I'm, I'm not going to really comment on this because we're going to take a vote in the election on the, on the issue of the uh, rail. And, uh, but I, I, first of all, want to see the basic things done, such as bicycle race and uh, uh, some alternatives that uh, we can have. But if, if it's going to have to be the rail, then we'll be then. Uh, I think the steel and steel probably is a good idea, but I still have to study the, the transit. Time.
Let's start this time with the mayoral candidates, and um, if we could begin uh, with you, uh, candidate Kobayashi, and we'll go this time uh, from the candidates left to right. What's the most promising future uh, for a graduating Campbell High School senior here in Hawaii? How would you, let's phrase this differently, how would you, how would you through economic development keep a graduating James Campbell High School senior uh, in Hawaii? A graduating uh, Campbell High School senior and, and seniors from all over the island of our state, we need to keep them here. And that's why improving our economy is so important. Building new uh, industries such as ocean-related industries, um, solar-related industries, any kind of environmental, sustainable industries, we can help to keep our graduating seniors here, especially from Campbell High School. I will be looking at opening a new industry called ethanol. Ethanol is a very good fuel, alternative fuel, other than gasoline. Brazil has been doing it for 35 years. And that's a new industry that I know the students of all the high schools could get involved with. We obviously have an industry that's very dependent on tourism. And so in the foreseeable short run, uh, there could be opportunities in that area, <coughs> ecotourism cultural tourism uh, and engine tourism. Secondly, we also want very much to have a technology industry here. You know, the state has initiatives there, the county has initiatives there, we work with the private sector to provide those kind of jobs. Uh, last but not least, I also see many more opportunities for our young people uh, if they are able uh, to reach for the stars and basically decide what is it they want to do is incumbent upon us in, in government to ensure that those type of industries will be here. Thank you. I think the most important thing that we can do to keep our, our kids here and, and give them good futures is to make sure that, that the place they live is properly um, built with infrastructure that they can, they can count on um, with trash um, s solutions that, that we won't have to have landfills with. There are a lot of things that that um, the city can do to make Oahu students stay home. Function follows structure. There has to be an adequate job market to keep our children Hawaii. Steel industry is the backbone of our U.S. economy and what made America the greatest country in the world when it comes to creation of wealth. Why not convert some decommissioned aircraft carriers, nuclear powered aircraft carriers, into steel mills slash recycle centers and give the prison population a job for $10 an hour? What better rehab could it be for that? I think it's important to look at a paradigm shift. If you run to a floating capacity and you build a platform on pipe creek, which is covered in concrete, you have form government pays the citizen rather than taxation. Thank you. We need to bring in jobs that uh, pay a comfortable rate for these individuals to have be able to stay here in Hawaii. And uh, you know, we do like a recycling center where we fully recycled everything on the island, picked it up, sorted it 24 7 owned by the city, by job, wind power, we leave with an alternative energy source that we can probably tap into. Uh, we just need to look for uh, good jobs that would be long lasting and, uh, and uh, fulfilling for these students. And uh, keep them alive. Thank you. Let us ask the same question of the State House candidates, beginning with uh, surrogate for candidate Rodriguez. Uh, how, what type of jobs would candidate Rodriguez like to create to keep our graduating high school seniors on island? Um, first of all, uh, we should uh, stress the importance of uh, more participation to encourage students to fulfill the furtherance of their educational fulfillment. We need to encourage uh, corporations, private individuals, 
people who excel in their chosen field of endeavors, and other people who can show and, uh, and show their examples to be emulated and followed by students. And stress the fact that, you know, Time. they will be in Hawaii and they will be good over here. Time. Can we show us? Options. You keep students here with options. And with this, uh, you can help small business. You can bring uh, high technology uh, industry to Hawaii. And you can increase higher education uh, opportunities here. So they can do whatever they want, whenever. Thank you. Canada Bird. We are, an, we are an aging population. What are we going to do and how are we going to take care of our elders when we all get old? I believe, with some others, that we turn the Neville Plain into the caretaking capital of Oahu, bringing the Sabre graduates into the ability to obtain the American dream, to have the right to own a car, not to be forced out and social engineered out of the freedom of mobility is key. Having that uh, ability to obtain the American dream is to have that house with the garage and own a car. That's the direction we need to go so that they can compete. Because we're getting out of the mainland, we need it here. And let us now ask the same question of the two congressional candidates. What type of job creation can you help participate in so that we keep our graduating seniors on island? How we have to them. First, I would uh, revise the educational aim. The educational aim in Hawaii is for employment. And we should have more of an ideal for educational aims so that it goes beyond just employment. You're too limited if you do that. Um, we should have grants, loans, and subsidies coordinate our education so that it, it uh, has a transition into our employment, advance the Hawaiian Kingdom, a great source of employment, and also to increase, in, encourage and to educate on how to make money. Thank you. Thank you. We, we can do a variety of different things, and we can't just focus on one thing. Uh, I have uh, uh, promoted agriculture for, you know, for years. Uh, and I know that probably in, in ever, if you're, you're only asking the question for ever, we may not have that capacity in ever, but overall, uh, we need to uh, uh, expand our agricultural production plans. But I'm not talking about a specific type of uh, production for Time. profit. Uh, you know, this is just uh, different different types of like, fruits and vegetables and all that. Time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that first year when you're elected. Um, this time we will start again with the uh, mayors. Candidate Cunningham, uh, during your first year, what do you expect to achieve as mayor, should you be elected? By the power of the minute domain, establish the city and county of Honolulu, you know, Honolulu Power and Light would be a state-held useful company by which uh, people can invest in and you have cheap power or penny a kilowatt hour. We're paying 31 cents a kilowatt hour. As I said before, our cost of petroleum goes to four hundred dollars a barrel, we're gonna be paying over a dollar a kilowatt hour. Um, I think uh, there needs to be a paradigm shift and I have the scientific suppliers I have to then explain more more depth on my political platform. Thank you. We'll go to the right, and we'll go back the other way. I have to work on traffic solutions, and then that be the, uh, the garbage disposal. And the infrastructure will have to be uh, start upgraded again, because our, our growth is out sourcing and our fundamental needs, and such as the sewers, the waters, and other commodities. Um, I guess, you know, it's, it's trash on the island. Basically, make it look like paradise again. Uh, thank you. Um, Candidate Smith filling in, I mean, a, a, a surrogate Smith filling in for uh, Candidate Prevederos. Um, what would uh, Candidate Prevederos, what does he plan to accomplish in his first year should he be elected? Accomplish in the first year. Okay, hey, the first year is most likely going to be more of a planning and, and getting things organized here. 
Um, we, I think that the first thing we do is we go for, we do away with the heavy rail plan. We would be going toward the hot lanes. We would also be addressing the trash problem. We would start a plan to close one and all the gulch. We believe that recycling and reducing waste is the better way to go. We would go for trash um, you. processing plans. Um, Kenan Hanneman, uh, excuse me, Kenan Hanneman, uh, uh, should you be uh, elected, what do you expect to accomplish in the first year? Board Member Bedford, may I, may I just interject uh, very politely at this time? This unfortunately has to be my last question. I've got something else before 10 o'clock this evening. We understand. So I would like to, if I may, with your permission, also do my closing statement after Please do. How, how long is the closing statement? Um, uh, we're asking uh, people to make that statement within a minute. So I can take uh, uh, the next, if you wanted to kind of finish any, uh, let's start over. And why don't you first answer the question if you'd like, and then we, we do the closing. Um. I think the advantage of electing me back to office is I bring my great team of men and women that have earned the endorsement not only of the Honolulu Star Bulletin, but also of the Honolulu Advertiser. They've endorsed us, they want us to go back and continue our work. Uh, secondly, I want to say that it's important to keep in mind, this is no time for on-the-job training. We have we've made great progress as a city. Uh, you know that, I know that, except some people who want my job don't seem to feel that way. But that's okay, and it's their right uh, to want to be the mayor of the city. But we want to continue to go forward. We will always recognize Eva, you know, that I inaugurated the Parade of Champions. It was your Eva, your Eva Beast Little League World Series team that we brought it to Waikiki we were joined by your elected officials, and it was all about Eva Prime, and that's what this administration is committed to do. Let me close by uh, saying a few things about uh, why I would like to continue to be your man. I love my job. You have to love this job. It's not about complaining, 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 grumble, 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 whining, whining, whining. It's about solutions. The easiest thing in life is to complain. The hardest thing is to bring people together. That's why Senator Kaka is endorsing me. That's why Congressman Neil Abercrombie at his very public fundraiser got up and endorsed me for mayor. I can work with our congressional delegation. We help save for our Naval Industrial Shipyard. to ask me to come back and work with them. We have friends at the legislature, which is why they support the long-term system, time on hot lanes, and will continue to do great things for all of us. Mahalo, God bless you all, and thank you for allowing me to be here. And um, good sir, you, in your first year, should you be elected as mayor, um, what do you intend to accomplish? Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to audit and check the books to see that everything is um, accountable. Um, I have learned through my running for mayor about a lot of things that's um, going on, and I would like to fix that. Um, again, it's like a business, you take an audit, when you buy a new business and see how you better run the bit, you better way for running the business. Um, the whole thing is about cutting taxes for the people and stopping the rail and getting the super ferry to bring the people from Eva to town. And time. Okay. Thank you. The first thing I would do is, it depends on the outcome of the, of the charter amendment on steel on steel, which will be on the November 4th ballot. Once that decision is made, we must move forward on mass transit. And so let us now ask this question of our congressional candidates. This was left on, on, side, on the table. How are you not asked to that? Um, in, in order to do something significant, we have to have a vital progressive change and hope. We don't have that now. This was on the if you want to continue to have the same old thing happen, then do it. But if you want progressive change here in the Middle East, employment, education, then I would suggest that you um, vote for Kaui Amsterdam in order to bring it about. Otherwise, it's the same old thing. Status quo. Status quo, same old boy status quo. Um, and so I, that's what I think is very important. Why change Amsterdam's Okay. 
in uh, Canada Tatai, uh, in your first uh, year, should you earn the votes of the electorate, what will you accomplish? I want to uh, bring back the integrity to, uh, to the government for Hawaii. Uh, I think we need to regain our uh, credibility uh, on the issues like war and uh, I would like to immediately uh, propose to end the war in, a, in the only way that is possible, which is to bring the, uh, the Kurds in the north independent Time. and the Arabs in the south independent. Time. Thank you. Let's ask uh, another round of questions, and we'll start with our mayoral candidates, and we'll go uh, from my right to my left, uh, beginning with, with candidate Kobayashi. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, yeah, hello, hello. Hey, hey my uh, state friends, let us ask you that also, thank you. Um, from uh, 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 the candidates left to right, let's begin uh, with candidate Berg. Uh, your first year, should you be elected, what will you accomplish? Well, first of all, I seek to accomplish a very simple feat, and that is to make a good marriage between the city and the state, and that would be lessening, reducing traffic by implementing a data software system that is being utilized in the mainland to pretty much turn the uninsured motorists extinct. We could remove 10 to 20 percent of the cars off our roads by merely taking the Department of Motor Vehicle Registration, connecting them to the insurance data network, and that would in turn with Honolulu Police Department with a click of a button be able to know who's supposed to be on our roads and who's not on our roads. That is a solution we can get within a year. Thank you. Thank you. Kennedy Schultz. Well, of course, my first year, I would be active in helping mass transit and rail move forward. But what I would really want to bring uh, out of my first year would be earmarking specific CIP money for our schools here. We have some great schools, we have some great school teachers, we have some great school principals, we have some great students. They just don't have the same facilities that are standard across America. And I want to bring in re uh, rebuild electrical systems and just 21st century facilities for our students. And that is something that worked very hard for in the first year. Thank you. Should uh, candidate uh, Rodriguez win the uh, votes, what would he be accomplishing in his first year? Um, State of Hawaii is considered a uh, designated regional center. And the function is done through the state of Hawaii Department of Business and Development and Tourism. His first year in office, he will legislate, he will use the bills to make it uh, friendly for foreign investors to visit Hawaii. And uh, you'll see later that, you know, this will create jobs and uh, future developments with influx of money coming from there. Thank you. Uh, next round of questions, uh, beginning with mayoral candidates. This one's from the audience. And um, candidate Kobayashi, uh, what and how can you provide assistance uh, for elderly or for our kapuna? And, and, as mayor, um, how can you provide assistance and what kind of assistance can you provide uh, for our elderly? For over 25 years I've been serving the public and that has been one of my priorities because I feel that people who worked hard all their lives deserve to have better years in their retirement. And I've always looked for tax credits, um, breaks on property tax for the elderly, uh, making sure that there, there's affordable housing, senior housing available um, at affordable rates to keep our kupuna as comfortable as possible. Thank you, thank you. And we'll go um, from the candidates uh, left to right and uh, ask the same question. The first thing um, you got to look at is I believe in taking care of my, the, the seniors. As on my platform, it states for all seniors that own their own home, I would eliminate property tax and give them back a free bus pass. And I would not cut the seniors uh, programs like Lana Kila Senior Center is being cut and I would try to take care of the seniors first. Uh, 
probably one of the best things we can do for our seniors is allow them to keep the money that they've got in their pocketbook. And one way we can do that is getting rid of that 0.5% tax that the mayor wants to put on all of us for his rail transit system. That needs to go. We can also reduce our property taxes because they're so high right now and artificially high because of the, the way that the market has been. Another thing is to provide a good local transportation system. Our Kapuna don't need to go from Ever Beach to in town so much as they do need to go in between Time. town. Thank you very much. What would help the elderly, elderly the most would be a form of government that pays the citizen rather than taxation. At the present situation, our taxes are going up, cost patrolling is going up, and when the children see that the generation before was the ones that made all these decisions and all these troubles, the question will come about how much, how, how well will the young take care of the old under those circumstances. Let's not find ourselves in that situation. I appreciate if you take up a flyer before you leave. Aloha. Why not a 21st century Noah's Ark? I'd also have to say that we're here at the end. And medical treatment for these people and their um, just their taxes. Uh, and you can go ahead and, and subsidize these meals on wheels for people that are stranded in homes. Um, there's many things you can do for the elderly, and, and they're an important part of the uh, society. So. I think that'd be a very important part for me too to be to take care of the people that once. Uh, thank you. Uh, so then, candidate Berg, uh, what if elected? What kind of assistance could you provide our elderly? Well, first of all, we're in a nursing shortage right now. We make we got to make sure that we have the personnel to take care of our elders. Second. We're outsourcing, if you remember Queens Hospital, I believe it was, outsourced its patients, elders, in their golden years to Ohio for care. And so what we have to look at is our zoning laws. And, and to, to look at the fact that when we have planned communities, Hobopili, Gentry, and Aseco, trying to get me a home in there with more than eight folks trying to get their monies together to take down the high cost of nursing care costs, Time. they're not allowed to uh, reside in those areas. It's all about zoning. Kenneth Schultz. Having many retired veterans in my family, I understand how much help they need, not just from friends and family, but from the government as well. Um, I believe that we should continue programs such as Meals on Wheels, um, uh, further programs to let them you know, stay mobile and live full lives so they can ride the bus for free and whatever mass transit they finally agree on, they'll be able to ride that cheaply, if not free. Um, and I just afford them tax breaks so that their, their housing can be affordable and they can just live the rest of their lives like, like they live at the beginning of their lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you repeat the question? Of course. Uh, should candidate Rodriguez win the votes of the people, how can he provide assistance for our elderly? Um, Mr. Rodriguez will uh, have, I, based on his conversation with me before he left, he said that he would break the legislation. You see, that uh, it's purely focused on helping the elderly and the amount of uh, money that will be allocated, it should be good enough to uh, make sure that it's good for the elderly people of Hawaii. So then let us uh, ask this question of our two congressional candidates. Um, candidate Tatai, should you represent us in Washington, D.C., how can you assist our elderly? Say that again. Should you be elected to represent Hawaii, um, how can you help or assist our elderly? I would also would like to uh, uh, continue the long, long term care for the, for the elderly and uh, try to provide them with the services that they need uh, 
so that our kupunas uh, will, will live a comfortable life. And we have a large community of kupunas in Hawaii, so we need to take care of them uh, as much as possible. Thank if you. I may uh, make my one minute closing remark, because I have to go. If you would, believe it or not, there's one more person who's going to answer that same question, and then we'll be doing closing remarks. And so maybe you'll just oblige us that. And uh, candidate uh, Amsterdam, um, what can you do should you represent us in Washington, D.C. for our elderly? Coming Amsterdam. I would sincerely and seriously address the issue. The entrenched incumbent has it. Um, he hasn't done it. He, most of his emphasis has been in advancing the military, if you look at the record. And so everything else has suffered, including our economy. He hasn't addressed it. Matters of two airlines going out, the cruise ships going, our dairies are closing down. If we were to re-elect somebody like that, it's ridiculous. Insanity is doing the same thing and expecting something different. Therefore, I, I encourage you to vote for Amsterdam and bring about serious change to meet the needs of our elders Thank you. And, and economic, etc. needs here. Thank Mahalo. you. So time goes by too fast when you try to get so much information into a candidate's form. It's now that time where we're going to go through and ask each of you to, within one minute, let the voters know why they should be choosing you uh, this next Saturday. Um, let us, because it's time to go from right to left, and also because candidate Tatai really needs to go, uh, uh, why don't you begin? Uh, this is again for those of you watching, these are um, the two candidates who are here with us seeking your vote for the Congressional District 1. And, uh, it might be in your best interest uh, to say your name again and then begin your one minute. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to this meeting tonight. First of all, my name is Steve Tatai, and I'm a Republican candidate for uh, U.S. House of Representatives. And I would like to bring back the integrity to the government and uh, to Washington, D.C.'s uh, State House of Representatives, uh, which has been full of uh, special interest groups, influence, and corruption that uh, people are going to prison and, and all of that that, that you know. Uh, I also would like to just ask you to please vote for me uh, at the, in the primary also, so that we can, you know, uh, produce enough votes and show a force. And then also vote for me in general. Uh, so that I can uh, be elected and become the uh, uh, United States uh, representative. Uh, I think we have had too many years in, in the hands of one uh, congressman, uh, Neil Abercrombie, who continues to Time. ride on the back of the, uh, the, the comfortable uh, and the time. funds and the uh, money that he's getting from the special interest group. Thank you, Dr. Canada. Thank you. Time for change. Thank you again. We need that change. And again, it is so important that we stick to that one minute. So thank you. Mahalo. Thank you so much for letting us be here. Again, I will line up uh, progressive change, hope to get the resources of Washington, D.C. and on the international level to meet the areas of health the Hawaiian Kingdom, open office, peace in Israel and the Middle East, education and employment. I'm a Hawaiian Jew, I speak, um, I speak Hebrew, I've lived and uh, I've been educated in, uh, in America, in Europe and in the Middle East. And now is the time to get peace. So I encourage you to vote. I encourage you to vote for Kaui Open on Amsterdam for the progressive change and hope. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you. And the next candidates we'll be hearing from are those candidates seeking your support uh, for the mayoral election. Thank you. I'm Ann Kobayashi. And, you know, if I can't commit to you, I would not ask you to commit to me. And I do commit to you four years of open, honest government. There will be no taxpayers' money used on public relations campaigns advocating uh, for one side of an issue. I will not look at I will not even sign uh, non-bid contracts involving millions of dollars. I just promise you open, honest government. So I ask, respectfully ask for your vote on September 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha, my name is George Nita. I'm running for mayor. And all I want to say is, uh, the, the election system, um, the way they're putting it out, 
I feel it's unfair to you, the people of Hawaii and Honolulu. If there is a forum or debate, it should include every candidate, not just a few. You, the people, have no way of finding out what the others stand for. We need to take care of each other, and this is what I stand for. I'm running the mayor, the mayor's office, like a business. This is how we should be running it from the very beginning, and stop a waste of money. So I'm just telling you to look at all the candidates before you vote, and don't waste your vote. A wasted vote is for a candidate that you vote for that does not do what he said he's going to do. Aloha and thank you. Thank you. Quick point of clarification. I believe this is one of the only candidate forums on Oahu that invited everybody for each race in order to give each person a chance to have a voice. And now, please, ma'am. I do want to. Yes. Okay. I too want to thank the board for inviting all of the candidates. Panos has been saying that it's a great idea if we could have all of the candidates standing up together. Again, I'm going to say it. This mayoral election comes down to voting for the same old thing for politicians that have got us where we're at, or voting for somebody who is going to affect change with experience. Panos Prevedorix is the man that can affect change. He's a civil engineer. He knows what he's talking about. You can go to www.panosforprogress.com to see his solutions to traffic congestion, our trash problems, how we can maintain and keep our roads safe for all of us, as we all go to Never Beach, our roads are not so good. Um, he has a plan for maintenance of roads and also for cutting taxes. Again, www.panosforprogress.com for all of his solutions. Thank you so much for turning out and thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of Panos. He's a much better speaker and he says his, his um, initiatives better thank than you, I do. Thank you. But Thank you, Dan. couldn't be here. Thank you. It has an unlimited capacity to take money and an unlimited capacity to have problems. If you start over in a floating capacity, you would have two systems that would be very doable, a fraction of the cost, and would solve our problems permanently, impervious to tidal waves, earthquakes, ice ages, foreign policy because it's energy independent because it is nuclear power. Why not look at a process by which we can all have unlimited time, electricity becomes time, life will be a part of the world. Thank you. My name is Donna Campbell again. Thank you for inviting me. And I don't like to run my government as a 50-50 deal where you, the taxpayers, work with me and I work with you. I'd like to get involved more with the board people, board members here and every other community. Take their, their information from there and what they need to have done in the community because they're the eyes and ears and the noise that needs to be made here in the city hall. Uh, it takes teamwork and uh, I'm willing to put my 50% in and hope the other people who got their 50% in and we can work as a team. Um, I enjoy teamwork. I did that in the Air Force for 12 years. I used a supervisor, and I really enjoy to fix things. So hopefully I've gained some interest at all, and I hope to hear from you on the next election. So thank you. Thank you. We're going to now hear from the candidates who are seeking your support for the State House uh, District 42. Um, again, we're at our closing remarks, uh, one minute apiece. And uh, we're going to call a little time out for our, our good friend and candidate to uh, make his way from behind these soon to be speaking candidates. And for those of you sitting to the very end, I want you to know how much I and the voters watching you appreciate your commitment to to democracy and your other candidates. 
So let us now finish up with our last three closing statements. Again, these are the candidates seeking your support for State House District 43, um, Candidate Berg. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Board Member Belfort. It's uh, House District 42, and House District 42 goes from the Hawaiian Railway Society to Waipapa High School. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been very involved with this community. I love the Beach, I love Waipapu, and uh, my volunteerism over the last decade has brought many of you uh, information. I have detailed subject matter uh, for handouts. I'm walking pieces door to door. I have a very in-depth website because I believe the voter should get full-time representation, and it is the voter, the residents, who dictate what your representative is to and how they act on your behalf. That is what I choose to bring to House District 42 at the State Capitol, is to actually take my directives from the community at large. My website is www.bergforhouse.com, and that's with an F-O-R, so that's B-E-R-G-F-O-R-H-O-U-S-E, -E. and uh, again, very detailed, in-depth information on energy, getting rid of our dependency on oil, taking care of our elders, looking at zoning law changes, amongst many other things. Thank you, Board Member Belfer. Good job tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate. Candidate Schultz. My name is Mike Schultz. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody that was able to make it this late. I noticed that the crowd thinned out just a little bit. Um, well, I'm running for House District, uh, House Representative of District 42. Uh, we've all seen with the current politicians, the current leadership of the 42nd District. We have the same, the same leadership, the same leadership staff, the same, the same ideas that aren't working. It's time for a change. It's time for new blood, new faces, new ideas. I'm 24 years old. I'm ready to be the new, energetic, proactive leader for your community. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, uh, is, uh, wants to represent the residents of District 42, and uh, the one is, he wants to ensure that their voices are to be heard, and that they are duly represented in each and every junction. His purpose is to serve the residents of District 42 wholeheartedly with great, great passion, endless energy, and endless commitment to integrity, dignity, and honor. As their representative, he pledges to continuously focus on the rights of the people. If you have concerns and issues, he's got a website, go to reynaldorodriguez.com and ventilate your concerns and issues and he'll answer you through his, through his list. Thanks a lot, and I appreciate the neighborhood board for allowing me to speak on behalf of Mr. Ray Rodriguez. Thank you so much. Thank you. This concludes uh, tonight's candidates forum. Um, this is very important to us that everybody have a voice, and uh, thanks for staying. It's not easy to run for office, it's not easy to live in Eva, and uh, thanks a lot. And we have a pair, a set of keys, in case anybody is missing keys. There's a set of keys found on a table. They're over here if you need them.